The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. God bless you. Praise be the Lord, God Most High, God Almighty. We're out here in His creation, living in His glory. We are worms on His footstool, because that's what this is that we live upon. Everything they teach you on the television is a lie. I'm tired of all their lies, and all the arguments because people are hungry for their lies. And I am tired of the incessant, worthless battle of bickering and arguing through those that profess to be Christian or followers of Jesus, whatever name you may put upon yourself. Followers of the way is what it was at the early church. They had to speak in code. Each letter of a sentence would be how they would make a word. And then you'd have to take the first letter of each word to put them together to make the actual what they were talking so that you realize they were talking about Christ because they were persecuted mercilessly. Remember, wise as serpents, harmless as doves. We have to walk quite slowly today, I'm afraid. I am recovering from a collapse and my heart has not recovered yet. But the word first, not me. There's always work to be done, but never enough time to do it. And all the things that have transpired in this world, all the people with their worthless arguments, their bickering and their whining, those that refuse to pray for others, those that refuse to love one another as themselves, those that would far rather listen to the news channels and the TV than they would the word of God and all they can do is argue and bicker and complain. Oh, you're, you're distracting on things that are important. It's like, know your Bible, son. Know your scriptures. Know your verses before you argue with me. I ain't got time for this silliness. Plenty of silliness out here as there is. And I ain't got the time nor the tolerance for it this time. So it needs to be dealt with as best it can be and nipped in the bud as best we can with all the things that are common. But onwards and forwards we go. Hey, you right, mate? It's a nice day, innit? Yeah, you enjoy. Take care. Yeah, so we walk along, stopping when we have to, enduring incessant pain as we must. For if we are to walk with Christ, then we should be prepared to suffer for Christ, to be purified, to go through the fire of affliction, not being surprised by it, but prepared for it. But I have no time for fearing the things that happen in this world, for as is written, so shall it be done. God's word, not mine. I see lots of people liking to argue and fight and blame and cuss and all sorts against each other. But there's no time for that. Yes, there are atrocities upon this world. Offenses. Woe to those that cause offenses. But offenses must come. As is written, so shall it be done. So I live in the word. Read and pray daily. Seek the Lord daily. It's praying without ceasing. Living in the word, not the flesh. Ah, this world is a worthless thing. And it will be destroyed. New heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem. I'm waiting for that. This world's still carrying on in its ways and most people want the dross, they don't want the truth. You pray for them, but they come to it. But it's up to them if they do. You live as the light before them. Who knows how many people live on this land? All across the earth, all the people everywhere. How many of them are actually looking to Jesus? How many are God's joy compared to how many are his lamentation? That's the truth of it. It's a narrow path and few find it, but it leads to eternal life. So we need to be living as that light and not tired out by the grumblers and the arguers and the fighters of it. So we have to persevere and endure. That's what we'll do, walking on to Christ every step of the way. We can't give up, can't lose hope, can't get overly emotional, fixated on the things of the world, walk in the spirit, not the flesh. The flesh is full of fear, wants to do the opposite of the spirit. God's the one that casts out all fear. He's the one that gives all hope and joy. Our brothers and sisters are persecuted and suffering daily all around the earth. So if that's what happens, that's what happens. We should be praying for them. We should be in all love and compassion to uplift them, to help them and guide them. All things are a season, something to learn. We grow through affliction. We learn from it. It gives experience and learning and growth, development in the walk. It's not always going to be an easy walk. You have to be prepared for that. Things you're not prepared for will catch you out. God be the glory. Praise the Lord and be happy and content with what you got. Don't be saddened by what you have. But be at peace in it. Let God mold you. Let him strengthen you and refine you. Focus on him. 
focus on his actual word instead of your television screens because they literally make the television screens to breed fear. The signals are harmonic resonance, so you absorb the vibration of the program you watch to create the fear, the paranoia, the worry, the emotions. You absorb them. You are nourished by them. You become what you watch. You are what you eat. You are what you consume. You are what you view. Understand that. Focus on the good things, the lovely things, the pure things. Remember the epistles, New Testament? That's a church under persecution. That's a church under slaughter. Remember, they're persecuting and killing the followers of Christ. But where do you see it saying, oh, be scared, be worried, run away? No, it's stay faithful to God. It's focus and know your scriptures. It's repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's live in the spirit, not the flesh. These are the signs of the spirit and these are the signs of the flesh. And it warns that those in the flesh do not inherit the kingdom of God. So if we want the Lord, then we need to walk in spirit. For God is spirit. And we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's Jesus. Jesus said to love everyone as yourself. Treat no you want to be treated. Do unto others you do unto yourself. But it's up to us to do it. He said, those that hear my sayings of mine and do them, I liken to wise. But those that hear them and don't, they are foolish. What a crash they're going to have. If you'd like to lean on your own understanding and carry on in your own ways and ignore what Jesus taught and what Jesus said and what Jesus did, that's up to you. That's your choice. You have free will to do it. Doesn't mean you'll have a good walk doing it. It's up to you where you end up. Obedience or disobedience? Remember, it's disobedience that began all this. It's pride that began all this. So cast off the pride and just be humble unto the Lord. Seek him and do not fear nor worry. I was thankful to get out today and preach. Though I don't meet many people, the people I do meet to give them about Christ, to trust in him and to follow him, the more good I can do for them. Food, blankets, Bibles and tracts, sleeping bags and so forth. Things to warm them with, to get what they need. They need the word. They need to endure and persevere out here. So I go out to continue ministry regardless of my physical state. So I trust in God to give me the strength to do it, even though my body hurts. And I trust in him to give me the strength to walk. It's only because of him I can do any of this. It's only because of him I can focus on this. It's because of him that I do all this. None of this would exist without him. So you praise him. Don't look to me. You look to Christ for your answers. He's the one with the answers. Remember, lean not on your own understanding, but seek God to set your path straight. That's right. Let the word of God be nourishment to your bones and depart from all evil. See the sun in the distance. I think of the light. To keep walking towards the light. So I try and... I don't think I can gather myself and me here, but we're walking. Narrow path. Slowly but surely we do go. But there's a light. The light of Christ. So we look to Christ, the light in our way, to guide us and strengthen us every step of the way. Because it's only through Him we'll make it. Not by my might, but by Him. I will trust in Him, in hope. I will hope in Him. I will believe in Him. I give my trust in Him and I will rest in Him. It's the only way we make it. If we're to follow Him, then we are to walk as Him. He suffered. He was crucified. He shed His blood. He gave His life for us. They mocked and scoffed Him. Forgive Him, Father. They know not what they do. Oh, well, yep, there's going to be some real villains out there. They're going to test you. I ain't saying they're right. Uh, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because I still treat them like myself. And you know better, you do better. Because vengeance ain't mine, it's yours, Lord. If they don't heed my kindness and my decency unto them, then on their own head, they condemn themselves. For my goodness to them is as hot coals upon their heads. For vengeance is yours, you will repay, saith the Lord. That is the truth of it. We have to keep walking on. We have many loved ones on this path. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, some have gone to sleep. They've gone home. Praise Jesus, they made it this far. They endured. And just like those calm waters there, there were living waters flowing for them to comfort them. Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. Jesus, when he spoke to the thief on the cross, I tell you this day you'll be in paradise. Well, I don't know paradise, so I can't explain it. Can't imagine it. But I suppose it would be as the Garden of Eden. But how much do we know about the Garden of Eden except for when all things were made and they were very good? We've not experienced it. We've only read about it. I don't think anything we've ever seen can actually compare to it. I don't think the best day we've ever had in our lives compares to it when we've been at our happiest in this world. That won't compare to it either. Remember, lean not on your own understanding but for him to set the path straight, so I will trust in him to get me back. 
Still going to preach Christ crucified and what a glorious thing it is. For he rose again the third day. He conquered death. Believe in him. The kingdom of God is at hand. Believe in the gospel. Be doers of the word, not just hearers. Live for Christ. Obey Christ. Live a Christ-centered life, a God-centered life. For if we are to follow him, we are to walk as him. So learn from him so that you can ever more become like him. There's no one else you should ever want to be like but Christ. You see, we should have been. But sin separated us, so we're learning and we're growing. Oh, just help me hold it in place, Lord. There we go. Well, Jesus be our strength and our courage in storms. Lord, give me the strength to keep on going. I never was smart enough to quit. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for your families. I look forward to the coming of Jesus. Because when he comes, we'll all be together with him, see him as he truly is. In the blink of an eye, we'll be changed. This old perishable body will have to be taken off to put on the imperishable. And we'll all be caught up together forever with the Lord. Oh, that gives me hope. And it gives me pleasure to look forward to. My faith, my trust and my belief is in it. And I see my loved ones that are asleep in the Lord. I look forward to seeing my friend again. I look forward to seeing my granddad. He was a believer. I'm hoping my grand was there. I know she weren't a fan of the church, but I knew she knew a lot. I don't know what happened to my brothers. I leave that to the Lord, or my cousins, or anyone else from my history and my old past. Only He knows. But my hope will be in the day of His coming. All this sadness will be wiped out. This awful world will be changed. The new kingdom, a good one, not like this. All its selfishness and greediness. People that want to be like Apollo. All these people that are trusting in men to deliver them. I trust in Christ. This world only gets worse and worse. People are terrified because a mark is coming. People are terrified because money is disappearing. People are terrified because they're being told they can't work. Well, if you're already at that level of fear, go get yourself a tent and a sleeping bag and now you've already got a place to go when the time does come. So now you can rest easy. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm out here and I get to regularly see a lot of homeless out here. And you know what? There's one man, he is ever so peaceful. He believes in God, believes in Jesus. Peaceful, happy as can be, has nothing. But he's peaceful and happy as can be. Because none of this matters. We grew up mollycoddled. That's the truth of it. Abraham with his tent. Leaving a land. Leaving his father's land for a land he did not know. But he went and did it. Obedience. When the time comes. And we do lose everything we have. Because they will take everything. And expect us to be happy. So don't cling to things of the world. But cling to Christ. Let him be your strength. Let him give you nourishment. Let him get you through this battle. There's peace in Christ. He is our joy and he is our strength. I have continued on as is necessary. I able to get out and do street ministry as is necessary. For there are people out here that are in need. And this old body of mine will hold out so I can do what's necessary. Because how can I leave them in their situation just because I'm not feeling too well? I would not be fulfilling love one another as thyself. I show no partiality. I must treat all as I would wish to be treated. And I don't wish for none to lose hope nor to give up. And there are those that stay out here that feel they have. So when I get the chance to see them, I have to try and encourage them and uplift them. Just to give them a little bit of hope. It's not always easy out here, but we do what good we can while we can because we can. We have to keep encouraging one another. We need to keep praying for one another. We had a sister. She's gone home to the Lord now. Comforted Abraham's bosom. Paradise. I don't know what it's like, so I can't imagine it. So I can't explain it or put an opinion upon it. I just know she doesn't have to be in all this anymore. She endured and made it to Christ. She suffered for him, and now she'll be glorified to be with him. Praise Jesus and thank you, Lord. The battle is not yet over. Her children need prayer. They need God's comfort and strength in all of this. They need his peace and his joy and his love and kindness and compassion upon them. Only the Lord knows what comes next. And we pray that the children's father be in the kindness of the Lord so his heart be soft to them, not hard. To be kind to them, to be gentle and loving and peaceable. You see, we do what good we can in the body of Christ. What we can, while we can, because we can. I will be keeping them in prayer. I have work to do and it's never ending. I live to do the will of the Lord. And he says to pray and intercess for one another, to pray without ceasing, to love one another as yourself. I will do that. I pray you do the same. Pray and uplift one another as we watch the signs of the times gather momentum and intensity. May God bless each and every one of you.
Be blessed in the Lord. God bless you. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish.